Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India sustainability as a core of the business logic there are many ways of addressing this problem i really liked what uh, shamer in uh, at mit has written about his book is very famous the, the title is presence and he says that and these author says author say that the essence of change is in seeing presencing and enacting we are we cannot do different things from being enacting more to the next phase of enacting enacting on one project and then movement from that project to enacting on another project if we do that projects will not be of a very different quality if we want to be enacting on something very different that enacting has to preceded by seeing means suspending redirecting presencing and then realizing and embodying and acting so first phase of any deep change is suspending your judgment and seeing and sensing what is going on so we need to know what is going on in the planet what is going on in the nature then redirecting that is seeing from the whole do we want this situation to be like this do we want these ecological divides to be like this do we want can we carry on uh, with the kind of cultural and spiritual divide we see today so that is the very important decision point when we see different things can't we have a future which is of very different quality that's the redirecting we don't want this future we don't want our future to be a simple progression of what is happening today so that's a redirecting and that that is a struggle in the consciousness we want this to happen then if we don't want things to happen and go on like the way it is they are going on then what is the alternative that does not come as a result of the logical analysis that comes with the deep presence being sensed to about what is going and from there envisioning happens means from there we know start seeing what needs to be done which is different if you look at the biographies of the great leaders you will see in their lifetime as well there has been phases of reflection they they went into quietude to figure out how they want to change their course of life what they would like to do, what they should be doing next and from that reflection and quietude insights emerge and you move to the different direction and in that different direction that starts with envisioning in acting and then comes institutionalizing means converting these things in the organizational forms so there are two options close mind or open mind if we approach any problem with the closed mind then we will be in the blaming mode so we will be deceiving desensing we will be blank and then start blaming others but if we approach any problem with the open mind oh, the the very first sign of open mind is seeing open mind is willing to see what is going on and then sensing and from sensing comes presencing and from presencing comes crystallizing of the ideas and co-creating so open mind open heart and open will that is the source of bringing about the deepest change when we operate on this paradigm 
only with this mindset and paradigm of presencing we can challenge some of the basic assumptions what are the basic assumptions which were challenged and as a result of that very different new business models are coming up efficiency is not only operational in nature efficiency is also sus related to sustainable what we are doing to our planet so we we talk about the opportunity cost but we also need to talk about the impact of our work which is not financial but planetary in nature growth in business is not the only success parameter localization may result in so many large number of organizations instead of one organization becoming very large and that is also good enough that's good for the planet in many situations many cases though there is a lot of conversation about the csr but csr follows a implicitly follows a leftover hypothesis what is leftover hypothesis when i earn enough when i distribute enough to my shareholders and employees whatever is left after that i am willing to use that for the societal purpose that leftover hypothesis run the csr policy and that may not result in a fundamental change which takes care of the some of the divides which we talked about sustainable development efforts are for protecting the nature that is also basic assumption we work which is not correct actually sustainable development is not to protect nature it is to protect humanity if we pollute the this this uh, planet <coughs> we don't take care of the societal concern and natural environmental concern then it is going to affect human being most eventually individual success might be leading us towards a collective failure if we look at business organizations large number of business organizations attract so called the most talented people large number of the uh, from the most talented pool of the humanity is joining the business organizations and many other organizations but we see what is happening on the planet environmental degradation is increasing pollution is increasing inequality is increasing and meaninglessness is increasing so we need to question whether the individual success and we define success means going to a very good college getting a good job sustaining on a high position quickly going to a top position retaining that position for a long time keep earning having the raise in the pay package and living in a good flat all that all those factors are the criteria for the individual success but in that individual success what we are doing to planet is something very very harmful so we need to question whether individual success is paving the pathway for the collective failure for profit organization may not be only for profit so for profit organization may operate with the social logic and this is the basic assumption we will see in emerging business model so the business models which are taking care of the social and environmental concern we call them social enterprise though all the innovation involves the application of new ideas or the reapplication of the old ideas in new ways to devise better solution to our needs but social innovation also uh, uh, social innovation also applies this thinking to the social issues like in education health inequality inclusion etc growing interest from the policy makers young people entrepreneur funders established businesses is testimony to the way that social enterprise addresses the weaknesses in the operations of both market and government market and government are not sufficient to address many many social problems and to address those problems we see the emergence of social enterprise this point we look at in more depth let us look at the market if we look at the functioning of the market we realize that market often take more account of the obvious and short term cost and benefits and it is very less effective in accounting for the long term factors like climate change so market mechanisms can take care of the short term changes but not and uh, short term gains but not the long term impact 
so social enterprise are led by a sense of social purpose and aim to show that businesses and markets can deliver social benefit and tackle the intractable social problems the solution to many problems like poverty unemployment environmental uh, uh, poverty and related to poverty and employment environment and fair trade development depend on changing the way markets work and social enterprise are one vital source for new business approaches for the fair trade for social inclusion community regeneration creating jobs uh, for the most for those most marginalized in the labor markets and environmental system so it takes care of the market failure it also takes care of the government failure government efforts are not sufficient to address the social problems so the ways social enterprise operate is often at least implicitly a critique of the limitations of the public service provisions state find it difficult to cope with diversity of needs of users especially niche and specialist needs public service is that they can be paternalistic encouraging a dependency culture in which people are treated and come to see themselves as recipient of the solutions delivered to them by professionals rather than participants in creating solutions whenever we are uh, uh, when a public uh, services mode is adopted people approach those organizations or those facilities as recipients not as participants they see themselves part of the problem or victims not as part of solutions but social enterprise approach approaches to public service often claims to be more personalized engaging joined up adaptable providing better outcome and value for money where the social enterprise is a mechanism through which we engage people not as recipient but as participants how do we position the social enterprise vis-a-vis -vis business organizations and voluntary organization so for the mainstream business financial and commodity market is the input value chain and lean production just in time are the main processes or the process criteria for them output is consumer market selling on price quality and brand and they also claim to create some social value by generating jobs and profit and by paying the tax then there is a category we can see socially responsible business social responsible business also look at financial and commodity market but they give greater attention to supply chain management and ethical and environmental issues they some green and fair brand uh, fair trade branding is also done by the social enterprises and they meet business uh, business meeting the social goals build a better business so they approach approach the business social goals with the objective of meeting their business goals as better whereas social enterprise works on the ethical investment in fair trade sources not just any financial commodity market social enterprise heavily biased towards social inclusion and environmental objective there is a clear bias in those uh, uh, objectives of inclusion and environmental concerns green fair trade and social inclusion is the central to the brands of the social enterprise and for them social goal is primary business goal is secondary then there is a public services which uh, has inputs of which have inputs from the tax and borrowing public employment uh, for them the process concerns are public service value chains combined with contracting out uh, for them output is access to public service politically determined non traded limited to payment and then they provide non market public good at at a large scale and then you have our ngos non government organization or voluntary organizations for them inputs are the charity donation for them process is volunteering into social projects for them output is gift giving away no charges and uh, for them the social value is drawn from the contributing to the giving culture so they get donations they take up some projects they give back to society so we can see in this slide that what we are talking about which are social enterprises are for profit but they have the goals and concerns which are similar to the goals and concerns of the voluntary and public services 
We can take few examples and that's with these examples we conclude our discussion today. So, there is a problem, uh, one social problem, economic problem providing electricity to the far off places and here the far off place example is of Rajasthan and in Rajasthan the, the, uh, the population of individual villages particularly in the desert area is very less and you have few hamlets means a dozen or few dozen uh, houses uh, staying together at, at, at one place and such places are very far from each other. Providing electricity is difficult, is very difficult over there through the conventional means. So, providing electricity is a problem, but there is a social challenge as well. That if even if we provide the electricity in some of these, some of such places, people do not wish to pay for that. Sometimes they are not capable of paying, sometimes they are just not willing to pay. So, that service become very unsustainable. There is a company called Gram Power and Mr. Khetan who studied in Stanford, he got this idea over there. He addressed and aimed to address this problem with a business logic. What this company Gram Power did is they first set up micro grids on the solar power because solar power is abundantly available in Rajasthan in desert area. But how they tackled the second problem, people, the unwillingness of people to pay for the electricity bills. They introduced the prepaid card of the electricity bills. So, like telephone prepaid card, you can purchase electricity in the form of prepaid. You scratch it, you put in some number, you use till the time that value lasts, then you can wait or purchase another card. This is the way they tackled the social problem, socio-economic problem in a for profit business model. You all have heard about company Sipla. Before Sipla launched their cocktail uh, treatment to, uh, to be used in the AIDS, the price of that medicine was more than 350 dollars per month, which was unaffordable to the people who were suffering the most of AIDS. So, based on their some process related innovation, they made, made a cocktail of the three medicines and they started, they kept the price which was less than 10 dollars per week and uh, naturally people in Africa use that and that has redefined the situation and, and the way uh, AIDS were being tackled. They faced lot of lawsuits in the World Trade Organization, but eventually they won the lawsuits. The lawsuits were filed by the companies which, which invested lot of money to produce those drugs, to innovate those drugs. And their logic was that they are charging for the money they have invested in the development. But uh, uh, the Sipla's logic was that if we start charging money from them and those who are suffering most from the AIDS who need the who need this medicine most are not capable of paying this much. So, it is unfair to them to ask and to uh, aim to retrieve the money from them. Patanjali, when uh, chemicals being used uh, very freely in so many day to day products and consumer goods, they came with the logic of Ayurveda and the natural product. We know that they have grown very significantly. So, their channel partners are not typical business people the large number of their channel partners are the beneficiaries of their yoga practices in Ayurveda. And uh, though in last two years the, the growth is not very high of the Patanjali products, but they have created a new market 
of the natural products and after their entry lot of other companies which were providing the natural products and which were their market share and their uh, profitability has increased because they have helped in increasing the market expanding the market of for the naturally natural products some of you might have heard about the itc paper mill it was on the verge of closure in the late 90s the ceo of the itc mill was called with a message by the board that you can do some wrapping up work and next one year we are going to close down this company the business leader asked for one more year and found a way out to deal with the financial and other operational challenges this company was facing they made the uh, network and collaboration with the hundreds of villages in the odisha and chatisgarh area and prepared the farmers to provide them the bamboo pulp which was used to uh, ma manufacture the paper they ensured that all the supplies being brought by the villagers will be taken up this social partnership partnership combined with the social forestry has not only helped company to revive the business but has brought thousands of families out of the trap of poverty and they are not they are now they are very loyal suppliers many other players approach these villages with even higher price for their supplies they denied so their business model based on the social forestry and the social collaboration there is another example of ini farms which was established all are, all these are indian companies this was established in bangalore and in bangalore they networked with the farmers in a end to end basis means what is the nature of their soil what can be produced there giving education on how to produce what to produce to purchasing their product and at times even putting up in the storage house so they are also in the trading but uh, and they operate in the open market but they also have the network established with the farmers and as a result of that farm lot of farmers uh could do much better in terms of financial and social benefits the farmers who are the partners to ani became uh, were benefited in a social and economic way amul is again a great example lacks of farmers who otherwise don't have access to market they don't have facility for the storage these farmers became the suppliers of the milk to this cooperative cooperative took care of the quality in storage distribution and production and uh, surprisingly 80% of the money this cooperative receives goes back to the farmers so farmers so whatever this company is receiving in terms of Uh, their financial benefits it more than 80% goes back to those farmers who would have supplied uh, milk to them so these are some of the very significant examples where social and business logic are deeply connected and uh, you will see this kind of thinking is redefining the business landscape in in all types of organizations and very soon in your career you will see that supply chain is not only has remained concern about efficiency marketing is not only a concern about positioning and get, getting the mind space finance is not only about selling things profitably operation again is not only about the efficiency you will see finance is along with profitability it will take care of it has to it has to take account of the social and environmental cost and benefit of our processes the operational processes is are not only about producing things efficiently or supplying things 
of placing things efficiently. It is also about how we do it in a responsible way, which is good for social and natural environment. In the marketing, you will see it is not only about gaining the uh, mind space of the customer, but making the customer aware of and providing the service and educating this about the service and product, which is good for the well being of the customer as well as for the planet. So, all the processes and management processes are going to be redefined around the logic of sustainability. 